Sometimes, for a multitude of reasons, we don't get the opportunity to head out with our significant other for a nice meal. But of course, that doesn't mean you can't have a nice meal together at home. The problem is you don't want to spend all day in the kitchen, you don't want it to cost an arm and a leg, but you still want it to taste and look amazing, right? In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a delicious bacon wrapped beef medallion served with gratin potato, a portobello mushroom and garlic butter. A lot of components in this meal can be prepared ahead of time, so you're not spending all day in the kitchen, which is always a bonus. Hmm, I'm hungry already. Let's get straight into it by putting the gratin potato into the oven. I recently made a video about how to make it, so rather than repeating myself, you could watch that video too. The great thing about gratin potato is you can bake it ahead of time, portion it and have it right ready to go back in the oven to warm and brown just before you need to serve it. It also freezes well, so you can keep some for another time. It's such a great starch option for a plated dinner. I'm going to put this portion into the oven to brown up and warm through. While that's in there, I'm going to prepare some bacon wrapped steak. Traditionally, you'd use fillet steak for this, known as a filet mignon. But we don't all have fillet steak within our budget, so I've got a piece of rump steak here, which is a much cheaper yet still delicious alternative. Rump steak is made up of a few different muscles. As you can see, it's easy enough to separate this piece along this seam here. There's another natural join along this little fat line, so we can easily turn this into four medallions. Being able to do some minor butchering or boning at home is such a useful skill. You can create meat cuts or portions that you can't necessarily buy. The more you do it, the more you'll love it. I'm also going to take off the excess fat. See how easily it pulls apart? Oh, and here's a little bit of silver skin. Can you see that? It's a piece of connective tissue that doesn't soften with cooking. So if you see some, it's well worth cutting it out. The steak will end up being much nicer without this unwanted leathery addition. These two pieces aren't squashing into nice circular medallions, so I'm going to cut the little side bits off to get them rounder in shape. The offcuts aren't wasted, I'll use them in a stir fry for another meal. Now we can wrap them in some streaky bacon for some extra flavour. Bacon is often wrapped around a fillet steak to give it some extra fattiness since it's such a lean cut of meat. You can secure the bacon with a toothpick to keep it together while it's cooking. Do you know what is super delicious on a piece of steak? Garlic and herb butter. And do you know how easy it is to make? I have some herbs here that I've just picked from my garden. It's some parsley and rosemary, and I'm going to quickly chop it up really finely. Here's some butter. It's still a bit firm, even though it's been out of the fridge for a few hours, so I'll soften it a little more in the microwave. You want it soft enough to stir, but definitely not melted. Then we can add in the chopped herbs and some garlic, which I'm going to grate straight in using a microplane. Then all you need to do is mix it through. I love piping this into rosettes. It isn't much extra effort and they look so cute. Just pipe them straight onto a baking paper lined tray and put them into the freezer to firm up. Once they're firm, you can bag them up and keep them in the freezer. It's great to have some of these on hand, ready to use at any time. It's time to start cooking the steak and a nice big portobello mushroom. Maybe they're called something else where you live. They're the big flat mushrooms. I'm going to season it and cook it along with the steak. My go-to when I'm cooking steak is to give it a good drizzle of Worcestershire sauce and then a sprinkle of smoked garlic salt and some olive oil. The way we always cooked steak for plated dinners was to first sear it off in a hot pan and then finish it in the oven. It's basically foolproof. Give it a minute or two on each side to get some nice colour and then on its edges to get some colour on the bacon too. Once this is done, we can set it aside until about 20 minutes before we want to start plating. That will allow about 10 minutes to finish cooking in the oven and then about 10 minutes to rest. 
please don't skip the resting step no matter how tempting it is. See this pan? To many people this is a dirty pan, but to some people this is the perfect base for a delicious pan sauce. These little droplets all around are actually called fond, and it's from the outer side of the steak we've just seared off. It's full of flavour and the perfect base to start making a sauce. I'll show you how. I'm going to add a little more oil and then add some finely diced onion. I'll also add some chopped garlic and a few fresh thyme leaves. These are essentially our aromatics. Give it a good stir around. Look at all this flavour. It's going to mix through and colour our sauce. Not only is making a pan sauce an easy way to make a suitable sauce for your meat, but it also cleans your pan. It's a double win. Next you need to add a liquid. I'm going to add some red wine and also another little dollop of Worcestershire sauce. Let it simmer away to reduce and thicken. You could add water or stock or juice or whatever goes well with your flavour profile. Then you can turn off the heat and melt the sauce with butter. This adds a lovely richness to the sauce. No one ever said a pan sauce is healthy, did they? But it's delicious and that's what we're going for. Let's get the steak out of the oven. How do you know when your steak is cooked and how well done it is? The best way is to feel it. Give it a little prod. If you touch your thumb and index finger together and prod this little squishy bit, you'll feel it's quite soft and squishy. This is how the steak would feel if it's cooked to rear. Move along to your next finger and feel how the squishy bit feels a little firmer. This is medium rare. As you work your way through your fingers, you'll notice it getting firmer and firmer. When you feel it with your pinky, this is how the steak would feel if it's well done. But please don't take it that far. We need to give the steak a few minutes to rest, so I'll just pop a piece of tin foil over it to keep it warm. I'm actually going to add these lovely juices from the oven tray to our sauce too. If your sauce is a bit runny, you can add a little cornflour slurry to thicken it up a little. Cornflour slurry is just a bit of cornflour mixed with cold water. Mounting the sauce with butter should really be the last thing you do, but I got too excited when I saw the lovely juices in the oven tray. I just had to add them. I'm going to strain mine today to go for a smooth sauce. But if you're going for a more rustic look, you can leave it as it is and enjoy the little pieces of onion, garlic and herbs. That's how quick and easy it is to make a pan sauce. So now comes the fun part. It's time to plate this up. Here's our lovely browned up gratin potato portion. It can sit here, right in the centre of the plate. Then I'm going to spoon around some of the red wine and garlic pan sauce. This is where a lot of the flavour is for this dish, so be generous and allow it to pool around. Don't forget to remove the toothpick from the steak before putting it on top. To garnish, we have the portobello mushroom and of course our garlic and herb butter. And lastly, a little sprig of fresh rosemary to finish it off. Where's the other veggies you're wondering? You could definitely serve some on the side, or have a plate to share if you wanted to. Don't you think this would be a lovely date night treat at home? I love how a lot of the prep can be done in advance, so putting this together doesn't actually take very long at all. Yet it looks like you've spent hours preparing it. If you love plated meals and want to add an entree to this meal, check out this video about how to make a delicious mushroom risotto and savoury parmesan twill. It also has lots of components that can be made ahead and it comes together very quickly. See you over there.